Hi folks and welcome back to the Advantage Applications channel. In this video I'm going to talk about a common problem that we face as Access Developers to make sure that our users have the most current version of the front end installed on their workstations. If you've watched any of my previous videos you know I kind of favor the architecture of having the front end file on users workstations and the data out on SharePoint or maybe SQL Server. And in the last video we talked about how to make sure that that front end file is in the same location for all users and it even self-installs if they open it up and it isn't in the right location or isn't named correctly. So that can be really handy. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to make sure that they have the most recent version of your front end as well. It's pretty simple. I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. And as always, these example files that I use in my videos and all of the source code, they're all available to my channel members. And if you'd like to become a channel member, I'll put the link in the description. It only costs about as much as a cup of coffee and it helps the channel out a lot. So I appreciate it if you do that. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump in and I'll show you how I manage uh, version control. There are probably a bunch of ways to do this, but this is the way that I do it. Let's take a look. I want to give you a brief overview of how this version check works before getting into the details of how I implement it. The main idea is very simple. We're just going to create a way for each instance of your Access Database app to check its version or revision against whatever the version or revision should be. So each copy of the front end file that you have out there in use will have a local table with the version number or as I like to use revision date for that front end file. The front end files will also have a linked table to your main data storage, whether that's another access file, a SQL Server database, or a SharePoint list, where the latest version or revision date is stored as well. When a user launches their front end file, code runs that compares what's in the local table with what's in the link table. If the data matches, that means the user's front end file is current and it opens normally. If the values don't match, then the user is prompted that there's an updated version that they need to download. This means that whenever you, as the developer, make an update to your copy of the front end file, you'll need to change the value in your local revision or version table as well, place a distribution copy of the front end someplace where users can download it, probably a SharePoint site or a file share, then update the version slash revision information on the back end so that it matches the front end version slash revision data as well. That way, as users launch their front end files, they'll be prompted to update and everyone will end up with the latest version. And you can automate the installation of the front end files and ensure that they're in the correct location on your users' workstations by following the steps in my video on making your files self install on launch. The link's in the description. Okay, now let's take a look at how to implement this in an actual database. For this tutorial, I'll be using a database from my previous video on ensuring that your front-end files are in the correct location for all users. The default form for this database is FRM Startup, and it opens behind the scenes as soon as the database is launched. It checks the name and location of the database, and if either are incorrect, it self-installs to the correct location with the correct name. This is exactly where we want our code to reside for version checking as well. But before we write that, we'll need two tables. A local table to store information about this instance of the front end, with a field, and I'll just call it revision date underscore time, and it's going to hold a date time value. And I'll just go ahead and call this table TBL revision underscore local. Next, I'll go ahead and populate it with today's date and the time 1 p.m. We'll need a second table on the back end. Also with a field named revision date underscore time. This will also be a date time stamp field. I'm going to call it TBL revision. And put today's date in there as well with the time of 1 p.m. Okay, now back to our code. What I want to do is when the database is first launched, but before the code checks to see if it's in the right location, I want to test if it's the correct version. Because if it's the wrong version, there's no need to waste any time copying it to the correct location. 
By the way, if you want to know more about this sample file, this uh, sample code, and how to make your Access databases self-install, you can check out the video. I'll put a link in the description. The first thing I'll do is dimension two DAO record set variables, one for our local revision table, and one for our revision table link to the back end. Next, I'll set our local record set variable to the local revision table. And there's no need to specify any criteria because there will only ever be one record in either of these revision tables. And I'll show you exactly how all this works in just a bit. And I'll need to set my other record set variable to the link table. And again, there's no need to define any criteria. Then I'll write a conditional statement that tests the revision date underscore time field in each table to see if the values are the same. And here's where I can decide between a range of options like simply notifying my users that an update is available, all the way to downloading and launching the updated file for them. For this example, I'll simply notify them that an update is available and instruct them to download it before proceeding. Then I'll close the database so they aren't working in an outdated version. So now let me show you how this would work. This file will represent the back-end database file that the user's front-end is linked to, as well as your development copy. This folder will represent your or the developer's workstation where the development copy of the front-end resides. And this folder will represent the user's workstation where their front-end files reside. Of course, in a real-world scenario, these three locations, the back-end, the developer's environment, and the user's workstation would all be three separate locations. But the principles are identical. Now let's say that you, the developer, needed to make an update to the development copy of the front-end file. You would launch the database, make any changes you needed, then you would need to open the local revision table and update it to the date and time of the revision. We'll say that the date is the same in this case, but I'll update the time to 3 p.m. You would then need to copy this updated version of the front end out to the file share or SharePoint site or wherever users would typically download the front end from. And once you're certain that it's out there in the location accessible to users for download, you'll need to open the back end file or your SharePoint lists or SQL Server tables if that's where your back end resides. And you'll need to update the value in TBL revision to match the value in the updated front end files TBL revision underscore local. You can do this from your development copy as well since there is a linked table to TBL revision. Either one's fine. And if the idea of allowing your users to download the front end themselves makes you nervous, don't worry. Check out my video on making sure your access front ends are in the correct location and I'll show you how you never have to worry about that again. Once that's done, the next time your users open the front end file, their local revision date value won't match the value in the linked revision date table. So they'll be prompted to download the updated file. We'll run it now just to see what it looks like. We launch the front end. The code runs immediately in FRM startup and the user is informed of the available update and told to download it before proceeding. And again, if this were a real-world solution, I would probably open an actual form instead of a message box that could tell the users a little bit about the update and also have a link to the location that they could download the updated front end from. Then, once they download it, they could launch it and it would self-install. All in all, it's a simple but effective way to manage versioning and location of your front end files. So that's it. I hope this video is useful to you, and if so, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.